Hey guys, good morning. It is hot. It is awfully hot. In fact, it's like gonna be a hundred degrees. I'm at the Air Force one because we're supposed to get a flyover any minute and the Coast Guard is right there. Let me check this one out. That's the Coast Guard Department of Homeland Security helicopter. They check the airspace in DC all the time. They're based out of National. Looks like that's where he's going. So this is the view from the Air Force Memorial. We're looking down at the Pentagon over there in the distance. Uh, the 9-11 Memorial is just behind that tent down there. And behind me, you hear a pile driver. <laughs> yeah, they are shoring up the ground over there. It's quite, quite loud. Uh, the reason is that Arlington Cemetery, which is everything you see over there, is going to expand. All of this land that you see before you is going to become part of Arlington Cemetery. And this road here, and I believe that road there, they're going to be repositioned over by the freeway here. They're going to move those roads and open this land up for internment. And then, of course, the Air Force Memorial will become probably part of the Arlington Cemetery complex. That's scheduled to take a couple years, and but it'll open up the cemetery for funerals through like 2060 or something like that. I believe those buildings will be removed, probably put back where they're behind me. So you can see down there, they've already started shoring up the new road. That's where the new road is gonna go. That's this road right here. And then this will all be cemetery. We've got four helicopters coming in, in a missing man formation, uh, just waiting for it. And uh, we'll try to film that. It's really hot. So I think, I think the helicopters are coming over the park, over the cemetery, not like the airplanes. So we have to look over this direction. They are. And then there's another one there, and then the one in the missing man goes up that way. There's the missing man, and there's the other three. And off they go. Must be dog walker day. So I've been uh wild cat. I've been meaning to come out here for a few months now, and yesterday somebody asked me in the chat if I could. So welcome guys to Teddy Roosevelt Island. This is a man-made island, I think. I believe it's man-made, or it's... I believe it was actually a farm, and then they planted the trees. I mean, that's how it was. But this is an island named after Teddy Roosevelt, and it is also home to the National Teddy Roosevelt Memorial. Yeah, they're not just Lincoln, Jefferson, and Washington monuments in Washington, D.C. There's a Teddy Roosevelt one. But... It's hidden off on this island in the middle of the Potomac River with only one entrance point. So not a lot of people make it out here to Teddy Roosevelt Island. But I thought I'd bring you out here because it's pretty cool. <sighs> so this is Teddy Roosevelt Island. I think it was originally designed to have like a fountain. I don't think I've seen water in it for decades. <laughs> And of course, there's a statue of Teddy Roosevelt out here. Let's go take a look at that. And there's also some uh, famous quotes of his etched in stone. Teddy Roosevelt, 1858 to 1919. And back here he has certain quotes about life. Youth. I want to see you game, boys. I want to see you brave and manly, and also want to see you gentle and tender. There's a tree here talking about the state. 
Ours is a government of liberty by, through, and under law. And his famous quote about peace is here. If I must choose between righteousness and peace, I choose righteousness. Teddy Roosevelt Island is a national park in the District of Columbia, out in the Potomac River. You can get a canoe and come out here, or you can just drive over on the Virginia side and uh, sneak in off the parkway. But let's go back, back into the woods, and let's see if we can find something. It's down here somewhere. Now, Union troops were stationed here during the Civil War, and after the Civil War, or actually during the Civil War, some of the first colored troops were trained on this island, the first colored unit. Now let's, let's make our way down here and try to avoid poison ivy. I hate poison ivy, and I see a lot of it. But what I want to find is somewhere over here, I think. That might be it. Hang on. Where are you? I think. There you are. There you are. Maybe. Covered in vines. Now I was told by the Park Service that the trees on this island were planted and they used three native varieties of trees. And basically there's only three types of trees on this island. What the rangers don't know is that there's a fourth type of tree. You see that one over there? You see that giant tree? It's covered in vines right now, but if you look closely, it's a pine or a spruce. It's an evergreen tree. It's tall. It's like 40 feet high. Got easy 40 feet high, 50. And it's sort of out of place here on this island where all the trees are basically the same, covered by vines. You ever wonder why that tree is here? <laughs> well, about 30 years ago on Capitol Hill, every congressman at Christmas time was sent a tree sapling by the National Christmas Tree Growers Association. These little saplings were about a foot high, and a certain member of Congress turned to a certain staffer and said, oh, why don't you go plant it somewhere? Well, that certain staffer came out here to Teddy Roosevelt Island, dug a hole, and put it in the ground. And now, 30 to 40 years later, that tree is still growing. <laughs> I won't say the name of the staffer because I don't know if it's legal to plant a tree in a national park, but uh, I do have rather intimate knowledge of that tree <laughs> being planted. <laughs> a friend told me, a friend told me. All right, let's get back out of the ivy. <laughs> all right, which way should we go? Let's go down by the river. Ugh. All the paths are all messed up. This area floods quite a bit and paths kind of disappear at times. Now well, we can get through it. Dogs have found the water. Used to be a causeway here. Uh, wait, uh, wait, no. 
There he goes. They're having fun. So we only hiked about a quarter of the island. It goes down that way quite a bit, under the bridge actually. Um, nice little place to get away from it all. It's just too darn hot today. Let's go find something to eat or at least drink. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Hey guys, we are on a scooter now. Down here on the National Mall where scooters are not supposed to operate. But if you turn your phone to airplane mode after renting it, <laughs> suckers. Anyway, breaking the law, breaking the law. Let's uh, spin over towards the White House where we'll get a bike. Because bikes are cheaper and go faster and farther. Okay. So guys, it's your Federal Reserve update of the day. This is one of three Federal Reserve buildings in this area. This is one of the two that are closed. That one is going to be renovated. It's pretty empty inside. You can see like those Home Depot construction lights hanging from the ceiling. You know, the, like the yellow cords and whatnot, the yellow cage. Uh, that's about it. Over here is the main Federal Reserve building and it is surrounded by this fence. And they've been digging up the courtyard the last two weeks or so. Looks like they're taking a delivery of sand or something today. That's the Fed. That's the dump truck. Dumping in dirt. And they're already digging up the dirt. So there's a major renovation of the Federal Reserve it's been ongoing for many years, and they just gave it approval uh, just a few months ago and issued the contracts. Basically, there's a giant empty space of the Fed up here, and they're gonna enclose this with a glass atrium and create more office space. Yeah, this whole area here is gonna be just covered up in glass, basically. It'll be one giant entryway out oh, atrium I can't say that word now this building back here is a Federal Reserve building too and this one's actually occupied but the rest of the staff is downtown at like 18th and K or something which is their other office William McChesney Martin jr. Federal Reserve meeting now CNBC used to stake out this entrance because the Federal Reserve governors would come here for meetings and they would uh, and, and like uh, the chairman of the Federal Reserve, they would always like, is he carrying documents? Is he carrying a suitcase, a briefcase? Trying to read into whatever was in his hands, how that would affect interest rates. <laughs> Things you do when you're really bored at CNBC, I guess. Okay, to the White House, I guess, since we're only a few blocks away. Oh, movie set. Yep, portable toilets. It's either a movie set or for whatever is going on on the National Mall. That big of that bug. What we got going on down here? We got tents down here. We got buses down here. Ah, oh, rental buses, rental tents. Something going on at DAR Constitution Hall. These look like military buses, to be honest. Half cent. AF South, AF Africa. These look like Air Force buses. Yeah, there's a, there must be some sort of military ceremony. All those, uh, they look like Air Force buses. Hey, I'm gonna check. So all the guys getting in the buses are in civilian clothes, but the bus driver, he was in military clothes. So. You know, some sort of ceremony, training or something. Okay, out onto the ellipse we go. You know, when it's hot above the grass, that's just really hot. Normally it's hot above the cement and cooler on the grass, but today, even the grass is hot. I think that's why we have so few tourists out here today. They're just like, yeah, White House, I've seen it. It's too hot. <laughs> What are we got going on? They're mowing the lawn. Flags are at half staff for the congressman from Indiana who passed away in a car accident. Along with a couple of staffers. 
Oops, was that crooked? So we're right across from the White House. This is the guy that sells the Let's Go Brandon shirts and the Trump flags. He's been right out here. He's got pretty much a little of everything though. A few Biden Harris signs. Wow, this bike is getting worse and worse the more I pedal. Yeah. Guy's trying to get some people to dance with him, but it's too darn hot to dance. Not too hot to protest. Not too hard to take a selfie. It's too hot to dance. Okay, let's swing up and around. So this building is now the Waldorf Astoria Hotel. This is the former Trump Hotel inside the old post office pavilion, which is the first post office and sorting facility in D.C. No longer used for that, of course. It was converted to, like, offices well, about 30 years ago and a food court, and then that fell off fell apart and then Trump came in and turned it into a hotel and then he sold the lease it's still US government property it's just leased out by the hotel so now the Waldorf Astoria has the lease and they run the place now behind the old post office is the headquarters of the Internal Revenue Service the IRS yeah there's the name right there this is IRS corporate headquarters, basically. That's where they do all their policy and legal stuff. Your tax returns don't come here, though. Your tax returns go to a field office. It's been pretty quiet down here. Well, that entrance is open. The employee entrance is open. Originally, they had just one employee entrance open. Now that door says it's open. What about this one? No entrance here. Oh, I think there's some fire trucks coming. Ah, later. Let's check the visitor's entrance. So this is the visitor's entrance to the IRS, and it still looks pretty closed. Visitor and main entrance. Well, there's nothing on the door. I guess you could go in. Oh, there's no sign saying closed. It used to say this entrance closed, use other entrance. And that's been taken down. Can you see it way in the distance? There's that Coast Guard helicopter again. He's just flying over Northwest DC. Oh, they've got a bunch of construction signs protesting something. Let's go check that out. So it looks like environmental activists have set up a bunch of those uh, flashing construction signs with different messages calling for protection of animals and reduction in the temperature. It's a good day to call for a reduction in the temperature. <laughs> it's kind of hot. Climate justice now. Okay. I think those are the guys who've been doing some of this bigger arrests and whatnot. It's really hard to read this close up, you know? Oh, there goes the rescue squad back in service. We've got to back up a little bit so we can read these signs. So, we got vote ecologically, heat waves ahead, have a nice day, fossil fuel inequality. The police are coming back. What are they doing? Maybe he's just backing up. I think he's just backing up and he doesn't want to hit anyone. No, maybe not. Maybe he's going on a call. Nope. Just, nope, just backing up. Okay. 
going into the art gallery. <laughs> Strange. So down here by the 1776ers, and numbers have dwindled a bit, not total though. There's still a good number of them out here. Some of them look like they're packing up though. I think their trailer left last night. Yeah. We still have the signs up, but I don't see the trailer. I don't see the park police either. Oh, there's the counter protesters over there in that little area. They put up a counter protest area for them. And they're yelling at them. Someone else, I think. Oh, he's driving by the truck. So I guess they're just driving that car around yelling at them as he goes by. Sort of a drive-by, drive-by counter-protest. Maybe they'll come again. So I think he's lining up for another drive-by. So apparently these sort of counter demonstrations have been going on for several days. Last night it got a bit heated. They called the police. Uh, then a lot of them just left. A lot of the 1770s. I think their permit expires soon, so they were planning to leave soon anyway. Some of them just decided to go a bit early. So we're by the American History Museum and over here on the left looks like they're setting up for another protest or concert or gathering or marathon, I don't know, something coming up. Defense media activity, hmm. DMA, is that part of the Pentagon? Or is that just some cool name? Let's, you know what, let's go check it out. That whole area is all sealed up grass-wise. It is a U.S. government vehicle, so it must be the Pentagon's uh, media agency, DMA. Oof. They're good. They're setting up for some sort of thing out here. I guess I could ask someone if I see someone. A lot of generators, atmosphere, looks like a concert to you. All those spotlights. Looks like some sort of concert stage. Maybe the USO is having a concert or something. Oh. We will check into that as best we can. All right, guys, we are back by the MLK Memorial. I'll take you quickly through, and then we'll dump this bike and head off to somewhere else. It is kind of cooler down here, though. The 
with Jefferson Memorial in the background. And up here is Martin Luther King's statue. Anyway, this is the tidal basin. Pretty choppy today. No paddle boats coming out. Right, let's head over this way. Hey guys, look at those clouds tonight. Yeah, we got a lot of lightning and thunder pounding the city tonight. All that heat today, well, it turns into rain. Hey guys, thanks a lot for watching today. Uh, appreciate you guys watching these videos. Tomorrow, if Biden is COVID negative, we'll probably see Marine One. If not, I guess he's going to stay here this weekend. But we'll find something to show you. You know, it's a big city. There's always something to do. All right, thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you tomorrow.